Hi, today I want to show you how I build a humidity control system for my room. Now, if you've looked into this uh, for taking care of your guitars, you might have seen that uh, you can buy a humidifier for, you know, 30 or 40 bucks, but a lot of times they don't actually have a, they're just an on-off switch. They don't have anything that senses the humidity and turns it off when, uh, when the humidity is right for your room. Now, I didn't realize that when I bought mine, I thought from looking at it that uh, it had a control like that. Uh, but fortunately, I found a solution that works actually better, still pretty affordable, and I think still cheaper than ones that you can buy with, uh, with a humidistat, with a humidity control there. Um, and it works better because the humidity sensors are not on the, uh, right on the humidifier. Um, you, can set them, you can set them across the room or even in a different room if you really wanted to. Now, so to do this, what we're going to need is obviously you're going to need a humidifier, right? In fact, you could actually, if you really want to save money, you could get a vaporizer and that would probably work fine um, and save you 10 bucks or so. Uh, humidifiers, are, uh, I think the main, it's actually, they're the same, they do the same thing and function in the same way. Uh, if you're, uh, I would recommend, well, I would, if you want to save money, get the cheaper one. The benefit of the humidifier is I think it might have two settings instead of one and a detachable water tank so you don't have to unplug it to fill it up. Although, you know, there may be vaporizers like that. It's kind of a blurry line between the two. Now, if you live in a cold environment and you're trying to warm up and you're heating the air, I recommend getting a warm mist humidifier. Uh, I've had cold mist humidifiers in the past, and not only do they have filters and whatnot that you need to pay to replace every month, but uh, it also just makes the room feel a little cold and clammy. Um, if you really wanted to save some money, you might even be able to get an electric kettle uh, for boiling tea water. Um, Although I don't necessarily recommend it, I did see one person did that. So you'll need a humidifier. You're also going to need one of these, which is your little humidity control device. Um, you can get it on Amazon, uh, eBay, Newegg, a bunch of different places. I'll include links down below for all the stuff here. Um, but yeah, when you get it, it comes in a nice little package with some wires here. You have a temperature sensor and a humidity sensor. Uh, because relative humidity is temperature dependent, so it calculates that. All right, now, as far as tools and other things you're going to need, you're going to need a wire stripper. I've got a fancy self-stripping wire stripper there. Uh, a little, like, flathead jeweler's screwdriver, regular jeweler's screwdriver, just a very small one, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, and lastly, you will need, if you've got any old lights hanging around or, or anything with just a regular plain Jane power cord uh, that you can afford to just cut off. You're not going to use the, the whatever it's on again. Just cut it off. You're going to need that and you will need to get, actually you don't need to get this. There's a way around it, but uh, I chose to do this. Um, I just went down to the local hardware store and bought this end separately and then bought a stretch of wire and put it together. All right, so I'll include a link for an end. You'll probably have to go down to the hardware store to get just a, I just got two feet. Um, or if you've got enough extra cable that you cut off your old light or whatever it was, you can just use that. Okay, cool. Now, when you get your uh, humidistat, it's gonna come in the box and you'll pull it out. And it's just a small box like this and it comes with an instruction manual. All right, the instruction manual is in Chinese and uh, I assume it's Chinese and uh, English, but the English is a little bit sketchy. Fortunately, if you uh, there's a pretty simple wiring diagram there. And it's pretty straightforward to, to use once you get the hang of it. Now, to get this going, I'm gonna change this down here so you can see my uh, workbench, which is maybe a bit of a glorified term for it. Um, so here we've got this. Now, oh boy, the lighting's not super great here. You see there's a screw here. You're gonna need to take that off to access the terminals. Terminals are where you're going to put in all your leads. You hear that little click in there, that's the buttons. The buttons are nice and, and solid feeling. So so when you do that, you'll see here. Now these are the, you don't wanna mess with these, all right? These are the, the sensor wires. But what you are gonna to wanna to do is, oh, where is it? Oh, I got the wrong side there. These ones over here, you're going to want to loosen so that you can fit your uh, screws in, all right? They're not your screws in, your leads in. Now I've already loosened them up, but the screws are pretty small, and that's what you're gonna need your jeweler's screwdriver for. Um, so just go in there, loosen those up. Now if you take a look at the wiring diagram, what you see here is, I mean, you'll have to buy it and really take a look at it, but basically you connect uh, one side of the switch to the power, 
and the other side uh, and to the other power line well you see how it goes right well we'll get this going here so what you need to do oh did I mention you need just a little bit of, tiny little bit of wire like this or something something of that nature now what you're gonna do is you are going to strip the wires all right so strip the wires just strip all your ends at once just save yourself a little bit of time Now I had already done this, and in fact, I just cut it off. Uh, cut off my uh, old. I want a little bit more there. Be sure to give yourself enough enough room here. This wire I got is actually a little bit of a gauge. And the gauge is a bit too big, but it does the job there. So you twist those up. You've got your wire strips. All right. Now here's your power line. On one side of your power line, you're going to want to twist on this small bit of wire. All right. And you twist those up. And the other side of your power line, you're going to want to take one end of this, which obviously this is what your uh, humidifier is going to plug into. Now, if you wanted to really save some money, this cost me maybe 10 bucks. I think it was $7. If you really want to save money, you could just Clip the end off of here and strip these and do the same thing with this. The same thing with this wire as I'm doing with this, right? But I don't want to clip the end off of this because then if I ever use it without the humidistat, I'm out of luck. Okay, so you've got your little bit of wire clipped on to your power line. This is going to get plugged into the wall. On the other side of that, you're going to take one end of either your, your humidifier that you clipped off or this wire and wrap that up there. All right. Wrap that up, twist them together. All right. Now, let me check my directions here and I'll make sure I'm putting these in the right right slots. Okay, cool. So, the one with the small bit of wire, all right, is going to go into Terminal three. All right, so you just put that in there. It's just going to slide it. See if I can do it. Well, you can see it. Ah, there's not really much light there, but you're going to slide it there. If you find you're having a hard time getting it in there, you might just need to loosen it a bit more. So you slide it into the third terminal, screw it down. And now you've got the, oh, let me make sure I don't get my wires all tangled up here. You've got the other one you twisted. So it's uh, one line to your plug uh, and one line to what's going into the wall. That one will go in terminal four. And this one's gonna be a bit of a, oh, gotta get that twisted up better. Uh, this one's gonna be a tight fit for me because as I said, the gauge wire I got's a little too big. Um, so it might take me a minute here to get it into the fourth terminal. Oh, all right, that went better than the first time I did it. Okay, tighten that guy up. All right, and we've set it up so that the power is going into the machine now. All right, now what you want to go, going to want to do next is take this small bit of wire. And that is going to go into terminal two. Let me retwist that a little bit. In fact, it could be even shorter than, than I've got here. I mean, that really only needs to be an inch long or so. All right, make sure those are nice and snug. And take this, your last wire, and that is wire is from here. And that is going to go into Terminal one. All right, cool. Now there's this back plate Ooh. that we can screw on to, to keep everything nice and neat. Um, we'll wait a second. We'll test it out first and uh, see if it's working. So let me plug it in here. I'm going to take this plug in. If it plugs in right, you'll know before I do. This thing should light up and start displaying the humidity.
level. Okay, cool. Good deal. Ah. Wow, it's not very humid in this part of it. Okay, so you also might have just heard a little click there. It's a nice magnetic relay there, so uh, that's a good thing. Good, nice quality feel here. Okay, so you see you've got a few, now we've got to set it. So you see you got a few buttons here. Um, there's a bunch of different settings here, uh, and uh, we don't really need all of them. So let me see, I'm hoping that it saved my settings that I had before, but maybe it didn't since I unplugged it. So you're gonna to wanna to just hit settings, hit the set thing once, yeah, and it looks like it did save my setting. Tap it once, and that's going to be your target humidity range. Now I have it set at 50, and, I have, and I'll explain why in a second. So I have it set at 52 rather, and I'll explain why in a second. So that's just tap the set button and you'll set your humidity. Now the next thing to do is press and hold the set button and you have this HC uh, display. Tap the set button again and you can have H and then if you hit an up arrow or rather a down arrow, you can go to C. H is humidify, C is dehumidify. So make sure that says H when it does just hit that again, and you'll go back to the main menu there. Now, the next thing you want to set is, oh, actually, it's going to go this way, D. And D is the range, okay? Um, so that is the percent, uh, well, you know, well, I'll set it and then explain it. Okay, so holding set, going to HC, clicking that to go to D. And I have it set at 4. And this is now. This is why I have it set at 52 with a 4% range. So what will happen with this is that it will kick on at 48, 4% below 52, and stay on until it's at 52. Uh, and that way, that I hopefully keep a humid humidity in my room that's about 50% relative humidity. Uh, as you see. Um, it's, it's not that right now, but I've had it unplugged for a bit, and I've also moved the sensors around a little bit further away from where I keep the humidifier. 45 is still pretty good for a guitar, so I'm not sweating it. Plus, I have uh, humidifiers in most of my cases. So, um, so yeah, that's the basic gist of it. You can plug it in. In fact, oh, in fact, there, yeah, since it's below, I wasn't thinking it would be below uh, the levels we want, but if I kick this on here, we should, yep. This little green light means that my humidifier is on. Now it's a warm mist humidifier, so it's going to have to warm up a bit before it kicks, before it starts putting out steam. But uh, it is doing the trick there. All right, cool. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions. If you liked the video, thought it was helpful, thought it might help you build a little uh, humidity-controlled environment, either for your guitars to save you. Uh, some repairs there which i've had to pay for or you could also build a humidor with it i've seen some people using it for that on the reviews online uh, if you liked it give it me a thumbs up and uh yeah hope to see you soon